All right. So welcome everyone again. Uh, let's go through um, how was yesterday, what were we working on, and uh, what have we managed to achieve, what's the progress so far. Any blockers, any support needed, please raise it as you speak, because uh, I, I'm pretty sure our fellows are ready to help us, and even our tutors are here as well. So yeah, let's go through it. We will again start with people who are ready to speak. Yes, Miki, yes. Everyone can hear me? Yeah, we can. So we started after the, the lectures. So, uh, I was able to look at the resources given, so I had time to grasp some concepts about the given and different components and what we were supposed to do. I, I think I have a clear picture now. Then after that, we had a meeting. At the night, we had a meeting. Me and my teammates had a meeting, and we planned some things to do. And today in the morning, I was assigned with a task of data cleaning. So I was able to, I managed to clean one JSON data. So if I can do it for that, I think I can do it for all of them. That's my progress so far. But today, I, I want to, I'm going to write the submission document and hopefully make progress more progress on the data cleaning. All right, all right, Mikias, that's that's good to hear. That's good to hear the progress. Um, let's go to the next person. Mickey, yes, you can even nominate uh, the person you want to go next. Okay, let me. Oh, I, I can see we have Carol on the queue. Carol, you can take over. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, so last night we were we were assigned tasks, and I got the. I also got the data cleaning part, so I'm just trying to, I've been trying to automate the whole cleaning process and I've succeeded to a point. Just going to finish our top. Uh, I'm just going to finish up that right now and go to the interim search. Thank you. Great, everything going well so far. Any blockers, any support you need? So I think that, 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 that's why. All right, that's great to hear. Anyone else who wants to go next? And Pascaline, uh, I forgot something. Can I go? Yeah, you can. So while trying to clean the data, one thing that I noticed is I was following that night uh, tutorial, the yesterday's tutorial, like there was some code on that. So going over. Uh, through it, me and my teammate, what we realized was when trying to clear out the emojis, when we try to pull that function, all the space between the text is removed too. Maybe it's just me, but I felt that kind of issue. And uh, I went to the code, the Nathaniel's code, uh, which says ex uh, remove emojis. Then instead of uh, using an empty string, I made it a space. So that worked for me. If anyone else is having the same issue, they can fix it like this. Sure, anyone? Yes, Mubarak? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Uh... Uh, as a progress, like we uh, we uh, talked with uh, our meet and uh, we took part uh, in some of uh, us were researching and uh, what I really want to ask now is, uh, do we all do we all have to generate public and uh, uh, give to us or uh, team leaders can do that? The first thing to to get access to the AWS, AWS servers. Uh, 
Sure, uh, Imtina, are you with us? Imtina or Rehmet. All right. The other one is, uh, it's going fine. Mm -hmm. That's... All right, uh, I've noted the question as they are joining, um, Mikias and Mubarak's, they will be replying to that. Or any of the fellow trainees who wants to answer one of the questions or even both of the Mikias and Mubarak questions? Pascal, mine was not a question, it was more like a suggestion. If someone ran into the ear because I already saw it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, let's wait for them for a moment and then uh, they give us uh, their thoughts. In the meantime, uh, let's proceed to Abraham. Uh, good morning. Good can morning. You hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Okay. So uh, I am from Group Five uh, to give a few updates on our progress. Uh, we've been able to meet uh, frequently. Uh, it's our third meeting for, for the morning, and we've been discussing on how to proceed and uh, how to further head on with the project. Um, we have discussed, we've gone through the challenge document and discussed, and also uh, so uh, we've given each other tasks and assigned uh, assignments to each other. Uh, but we have a few questions, uh, about three of them, and uh, maybe we'll wait until someone shows up and answers them for us. Outside of that, we've been, we've been meeting each other. Uh, we have one group member that is not active. Uh, we have uh, moved on for, for we've, we've, we've left that out and we've moved. Uh, we've, we're continuing as a group of five, and that's from our end. When the question, when there's someone to answer, we'll ask our questions. We'll come back with the questions. All right. Uh, have you let um, the tutors know that you have one of the team members who's not active? Yes, uh, I mean, I have uh, notified uh, Rodas through the Slack messages several times yesterday. I'm not sure if she has seen it or not, but yeah, we have to continue with our work. We can't um, let that hinder us, right? Yeah, sure. All right, keep it up. Um, we have more people. And one who's ready to share the progress. Any questions? Support they need? Or maybe shall I just, I'm sorry, shall I just ask questions if there's someone who's going to answer? I mean, from the fellow peers? Absolutely. So uh, yesterday a key was uh, sent to us. I just wanted to know, can everyone of the team members use that without, uh, is it capable of allowing everyone to use it at the same time, every team member? I think uh, if they didn't add uh, the public key of uh, other members, maybe, you can't access that server. It is just my opinion, but I think every since we have to, I mean, every one of us should practice fine tuning. 
I think uh, we should also generally like him try to use it. But that's just my opinion. But it, it kind of makes it that every one of us tries, not only the team leader or one person in the group. Okay. I guess we'll try that. We'll try all try to generate the key. But, but I thought it said only the team lead should generate on the Slack. Okay. Uh, let's have him tonight help us. Imtina, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, Abraham, can you come again with a question? Okay, sure. Uh, I, I was just asking, can everyone use uh, the key at the same time? All team members, can they work on it at the same time? Or is it only for a few, or a team lead only? Um, sorry, can you say again, what key are you talking about? Uh, yesterday we were shared with uh, an AWS, I'm not sure, no, uh, using SSH key for AWS. Oh, okay. Um, uh, no, the thing is that each one of you, uh, every one of you have to like, uh, like can have an access uh, to, to this, uh, to the, um, to the, to the AWS instance and each one of you should have created their own keys for their from their devices and uh, share the public key on the form so you have to sign using this form that was shared by Webable on on the on the channel you have to you have to each one of you have to fill it share the, and share their public key that they created and then they will get an access so each one of you can have an access to the, to the instance if you are facing problems uh, like some of you may be facing problems, cannot access the, the instance, then maybe I okay, guess you can like depend on, on some of you that can have, but in principle, should, all of you can ha should have access to the instance. Um, so, are you facing particular problem? Yes, Rodolf? Not. Okay. Yes, uh, good morning, and Tina, good morning, Pastor, and everyone. Yes, I do. Uh, I'm facing a, a particular problem. I cannot log in into the Jupyter Hub. Um, cannot log into the Jupyter Hub. Um, no. Can I uh, see my screen? Um, yeah, but I'm not sure I can. I can help you with that. But yeah, you can can share it. Maybe someone else can help. Um. I'm saying because I, I I haven't tried I haven't used it but uh, show me to see. Okay. Meanwhile, I can tell that uh, in principle, you can also um, uh, okay. I'm just I'm just reading what's what uh, here in the document. Sorry. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, as uh, Yabeba said in the, in the channel, I feel uh, it, this is the configuration file I have created and I feel it. This is my username and mm -hmm. I put here the, uh, I mean, Where the, the file is. For, yeah. for the private key. So I save it and after that, uh, are you able mm -hmm. to sign in? Yes. So I was able to connect by using SS, SSH uh, G4. G4 is my group. So that is yeah. it. And after that, I try to to log in. And, uh, try to log in. And it's not working for me. I don't know why. Um, 
Okay. Uh, do you have? Uh, um, um, do you have? Uh, sorry. Do you have? Um, uh, VS Code. Do you have VS Code in your computer? Yeah, you have yes. it. Can you connect through there? Uh, 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 okay. By using the the SSH. Yes. Before? Yes. So uh, open a new one. Open a new window. A new one. Yeah. So, um, just a disclaimer, I'm not sure that I know the, the right answer to this. So, if uh, um, I, I'm just going to try it. So, uh, you should like. So yeah, so you see this startup window, you see connect to in oh, the, right. this like this welcome window you see, like the one that is open in front of you. And open a new file, open a open a, a folder, you can see like there is connect to, so you can, yes, the last option. Okay. Yes. And you have SSH. um so you, you are missing some something some some of the extensions that you need so you can use um principally you can use um, if you connect this or ssh um uh in within vs code you could be able to to like uh use jupyter through here okay uh, So it um, there will be like um, this type of search here. Or did you press uh, connect to? Yeah, when I I, I click on connect to, yeah, it was. It was saying installing. Connect to host. Yeah, yeah. You connect to host. Yeah. Remote. Exactly. Okay. Yes. I think. Uh, okay. Good. Yeah, you have it already. See. You four. Open the new window. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. Right. So. So once it opens, you should be able to like uh, open any within this window. Should be able to open any folder you want within in the remote instance, and uh, see if you can create and interact with the Jupyter notebook here. So, okay, I think it should be. Yeah. So yeah, once you open here, if you open a folder, for example. can close the lot. Okay. Okay. You have to open a folder first. To close the others? Um you can close the others if you want. No don't 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 close the one that is connected. Um I think it should be this one. Yeah. Yeah this is the right one. Okay. So yeah open a folder this um shows the option to open a folder. No in the startup in the start yeah okay it's here also. Okay. Um, yeah control yeah so you see this is um uh Our username yeah this is your username yes so you don't have any any uh any file created you don't have any any stuff like you don't have anything in in your directory but okay you can open this and create start creating folders there so if you want uh, you can not a hundred percent sure of the steps that are needed to make this work. Um, so, so this is your home folder. Um, but you, I mean, you could start working, uh, create a folder and working together. Um, but, 
actually the thing yeah. is um since you like of course each one of you will have their own home folder so they can like you can work there if you want but to have maybe you would maybe you would decide that you want to work on the same code somewhere and like you can choose um i don't know what one of you should have uh um Okay, let's see. Yes. Say what? Let's uh, because I don't have all the information about this. Um, can we should wait if like um, yeah, about someone else who have like an information. I just wanted to think like maybe one of you have a root uh, access. Um, it's, it's probably the leader or something, but I don't know how this was uh, was set up, so I don't know how it should work. Like, uh, if you want, um, um okay. yeah, so uh, like, uh, if you want to in install any package or something, you'll need, uh, like, uh, um, uh, the root access, and then, like, uh, not all of you will have the root access, I think. Um, uh, so I don't know the answer to this, but, um, so, but I'm just saying, like, uh, you can try here, like in the base code, you can try to create like uh, the Jupyter notebook that you want and see if you can work with it. I don't know how to solve this issue with the Jupyter Hub. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry if like my answer is not complete. But, um, Thank you. By the way, uh, yeah. while working in here, uh, uh, we won't create any if you want to work on you have okay yeah in in uh, you know because we are working on on in a team we yeah create on, uh, on an organization when we will we'll be working on it so uh how mm -hmm. i mean it will be separate we'll be working over there and when it comes to fine tuning uh, the model will come to the uh, Jupyter, I mean, we come to the cloud here and work on that. I don't really know how we can. Yeah, of course, yes. So you have like a, you have your, of course, your code will going to be in on the in a repo, right? Um, yeah. Like working separately, like each one of you, you can choose to work um, locally, I mean, locally or like on on the instance on the code that on the repo so you you clone it and each one of you like works on like different branch or a different part of the code uh the part of like the the notebook or the 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 code that will actually do the fine tuning this one that requires to run uh for a long time maybe like um, it, it will take some time and you need it to run on this uh, like um, parallel, parallel. This thing that you can maybe you can have it central at in or in in someone's. Um, that's what I said. What I was talking about, like having a root, root access, because one of you will have like the access to like uh, his other. Me, um, how does do this? I I I'm not sure. Like um, okay, well, we can choose that one of you can set this up in their home directory. Like uh, and work on this um, uh, on this fine tuning um, instead. Like uh, each one of you try to do that. If, like I mean, it's not it's not efficient to do that. Like uh, locally, uh, I mean I mean on the instance, but uh, you have co copies of it. So we can choose like one of you to run the code ru act to do act the actual running, not the act not just uh, the the modification. So is that, does that answer your question? uh somehow yeah. <laughs> yeah okay yeah so yeah i'm sorry so there should be like uh, i will ask or you maybe you can ask um uh like on this uh, on the on the slack channel or i can ask uh, for you to give you like maybe a brief uh, clarification on how to use uh, like uh, the aws instance uh because i personally don't know all the details so um okay, if good. anyone has other questions about this uh, let's wait till like uh uh yeah Babal or someone who um, maybe from other 10x team who knows about this 
can join. Okay. Um, that is connection. All right. Um, the Barak was your question also regarding this. Hey, Mubarak. Hey. Yeah, was your question also regarding this? Uh, I think she already answered it. We oh, can, okay. you guys uh, can ask that. All right. Um. All right, uh, let's hear from Abdelahman. Hello, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I really have a, a question. Uh, make me some confused. Just, uh, uh, should we load the model? Uh, fine tuning it using this uh, AWS GPU. Oh, Ahmed, you are a little bit broken. Can you repeat that? Yeah. The Uh, okay, uh, I will try to say it again. Uh, I have this confused about uh, should we load the model locally and uh, fine tune it uh, using AWS, uh, AWS GPU. Yes, that also have to do. like just work locally on the or sorry or log work on the AWS instance. Uh, and then there you can uh, load the model and fine tune it and, and save it there. That way. I think that the instance has the GPU uh, capabilities that we, uh, we assume we don't have it um, in your local machine. That's why. Okay. Do you have um, more questions? <laughs> Does this clarify or require, like, what is the point of confusion if there is more? Uh, I get it now. Uh, thank you. Okay, good. All right, Ahmed. Uh, let's take more people. Uh, I saw Mectis had a question in the chat box like this. Do you mind opening your mic and speak it out loud? I'm, I'm here as well, just Pasalin, just uh, there are questions I can answer. All right, thanks for joining Yabi. Uh, Rodolf had an issue, ha had a question, Rodolf. 
and Abraham, uh, yeah, anyone can start. Abraham, you can start. Hello. Okay, good morning. Morning again to you, uh, Yeah, we had a few questions on the project. Uh, the first one is, uh, me, well, when we are fine tuning uh, the model, what is the end task? Um, uh, are we supposed to prepare it for a question and answer pair, or is it supposed to generate uh, the next word on the final pro on the final display for the ad content ad? And the second question is that we were planning to use uh, another pretend model uh, that should that seems to suit us very. Uh, more in a better way, the Gary model, we're planning to use that and we wanted your advice on that. So, I mean, Thank not, you. so which which model is like, can you specify which model that you want to use just so that I have an idea? The Gary model, the one specified on the, I think it says Lama to Amharic. Yeah, so you want to use that over another one? You mean? Yeah, we were planning to do that. In what do you think of that? Yeah, that's so, okay. What, so, but what what were you first? Ask. What were you planning to use, and then what are you trying to use now? We were planning to use the Lama, the Lama Seven B, the Seven X B. I think I'm not right yeah. about the model yeah, name, but Seven B. Yeah. Yeah. When we tried that, to test it, Gary. yeah, we tried to test it on the hugging face chat, on the hugging chat, hugging face chat. And uh, it seemed that we didn't really uh, get an, uh, a satisfying uh, answer or generation. So we just wanted to switch to this one, if it's possible. I mean, yeah, I mean I think, I think, I think, as I was saying, I think that's possible. It's not, uh, if you are within Llama, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, you can use Gari one because Gari has just basically exactly fine-tuned already on uh, on that, on the base, the Facebook base, Lama 2. So in principle, you know, it, it's still the same, it's just that fine tune. Um, I think there shouldn't be a problem, it's, it's, but don't assume that the Gari model is also just uh, sufficient only. You still have to fine tune it probably or make it work. Yeah, I understand we have, we have to further process it. I just want as so, a, to choose the, it as the, a base the part, model. The part, I mean, the part that's maybe just we, we have to think is uh, identifying why something works and why something doesn't work is also a good thing. It's uh, you, like, so for example, the Lama 2 model is just a base model it, and anything that is customized on it is, all, of course, because it, it has seen now many Amharic uh, other um, data, so it should, in principle, be better, but taste it in such a way that actually it works for you as well. Because if they showed a lot more non ad and you know something, I mean, as long as so, as long as it, you objectively say, okay, I am going to use that because it is uh, it is better. I have proved that if I, even if I customize Llama to just the usual like on the base. I will not get the same result as the one that uh, customizing on Lama to Amharic. I think that's a, a better way of putting it. But just simply switching sometimes, because you have now a resource, you can find tune both and you can check as well. So instead of just trying to select based on only, uh, I think we have done that already. You know, that's, we haven't tried it. We have tried the Amharic one yesterday. I think Nathaniel was trying, so I will ask him how much but for example, they, it, it seems they don't include their tokenizer uh, in the model. So which means you're gonna be struggling as well uh, when you find you. So we will check that, um, but check that just, you know, it's it's important to, to have an objectively why you choose something. But as long as that, I mean, it, we don't have a problem, whichever you choose such that it, it addresses the objective. So, you know, you're not, you're, you're gonna be fine. I want. I don't want everyone, of course, to to think, okay, the Gary Amharic is good. I'm gonna use. I mean, if all every every group uses that, you lose the advantage of experiment, you know. And so I would be very much, of course, still, if you are within Lama, you can use it. 
if your if, if your group chose llama you can use it if your group chose some other model like mistral whatever you know even if you might not get a good result at the end but it's a really good experiment to do so i would still ask every you know groups that chose something else to keep that their choice and and struggle so it would be you know think of collective sometimes than think of just as an individual but if you chose llama already then yeah you can you can choose any customized llama uh, if it suits you does that address that that's answer your question uh yeah uh and the okay. first and one the other question was first. what was it uh when we fine-tune the model are we so what are why what are we preparing it for i mean the end of task is it supposed to be for a question and answer or or an extra word, next generation. Types. Both are the same though, you know, it's not, it's, it's so it's, a, it's a both next word generation. It's just, uh, it's just custom, the, the fine tuning is slightly different. So the fine tuning in, in a kind of base, let's call it just base versus instruct, you know, so you are asking what kind of instruction should we train it for? Um, and whether it's a chats, whether it's, you know, a much more Q and A, or whether it's something else. But in all of them, it's still generating one word. So in that in that sense, you shouldn't come be confused. But so the first part. So there's two parts for this training. One part of this training is you should be um, you should be training such that it actually understands Amharic better. That means without just without at all, you know, any instruct. It generates, it understands Amharic. And that that is one part. That means it has a good tokenizer. It has, uh, you know, good tokenizer means by now you understand what tokenizers are. And, you know, so that part. And, and the second part is, of course, the most important we want is the QA in, in terms of rank, right? So basically, we want it to generate given um, a certain context. That so this is called actually that Q and A. Just there will be a uh, context. There will be a question, and the question can be. Uh, and it's actually not Q and A. It's uh, maybe it's summarization, um, because you are trying to summarize summarization and generation. So I, I'm, I'm not sure what that is, but it it's it suits more. It's suiting more for summarization than than Q and A because Q and A is more like you ask a question about it retrieves information from the context it gives you while a summarization is it looks at the context and does some transformation to that text and generates something of some that summarizes that so it's much more of um that kind of instruction so let's let's for now for the lack of work it's just it's summarization but i think i would say instead of summarization you should just say it's ad generation you know uh, or promotion promotion generation so you should be the second part of your fine tuning should be on that does that make sense yeah sure uh okay. I think so it is the, the second part is instruction in that instruction it's called ad um ad generation when or just summarization so the, the two are closest the closest known is summarization. Okay. And uh, there are other hands, but is that Mubarak and then Reddit? Okay. Or I saw Hello. also the hand from uh, Rudolf, but you can, Rudolf, you can go next after my Reddit. Uh, Mubarak. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, my question is when I experimenting the base models, uh, some of uh, and give an Amharic uh, uh, question, uh, some of them generate uh, an Amharic uh, maybe character or word, but doesn't make sense. And some of them, like, uh, say uh, it is a criminal uh, um, question or personal, you are asking a personal question and stuff. So, uh, does this uh, tell us the model uh, have a pre-trained Amharic data set or uh, it doesn't really show that? That's yeah, one absolutely. Question. I mean, we, we have in our test also, it told us, you know, you are trying to break something like, our, you know, criminal of whatever. 
So in those models, you usually don't understand. They seem to be fine-tuned only on really quality English data. So they haven't or selected some other data. So in that sense, um, so in that sense, it is it might be an issue, like because they don't have at all, they haven't seen at all anything on Haraki. And you can still fine tune them uh, using a different tokenizer, but it's, yeah, it might be a place where you say, like, okay, it hasn't seen anything of Amharic, so I might just try something else. So, which model was for you, like, doing that? Uh, uh, amazingly, the Lama too was saying that, to be honest. And I'm amazed. Yeah. Uh, in that case, I mean, I mean, I think, yeah, it, it may be the same model for us as well, just it does that. But I think if you cast, if you fine tune it, it would, should still be fine. So that's like, what, uh, what the ones that generate some hierarchy may be good or not for the, I think uh, normally, you know, that's that's why it's not an objective measure. Objective measure is if you fine tune it and, and see. But the objective that for me, the very simple way was just that, like, okay, how much, you know, anyone that, that at least understand Samharic and generate Samharic in their data, it must they must have had Amharic component. So which is better than you know nothing. Yeah, so it's a proxy okay. to say yes. Okay. But it's Fine. not a definite yes. Uh, somehow and if uh, our goal is to experiment and uh, my team also want to experiment on another model uh, to try on an Amharic. Yeah. So does that affect our uh, goal if we experiment and if not, even though we didn't get a good result? Does it no, affect it's us? not. That's uh, even encouraged. As long as you do meticulously, you know, like just put effort, not just try it. But I think that's good. Yeah, that's actually that's what I was saying earlier. It's not about only, you know, we try enough, as I said, that one at least works. But just it is good that you experiment because then you gain a valuable insight that that will improve further. So, for example, then after that, after that, we might all focus then on that one model that works, knowing now with the lesson of what doesn't work. So thinking in a, thinking in a group is good, and therefore I would say experiment. You know, at least every group should experiment. Maybe two. You know, one that you choose and one. You know, at least you think is interesting, but you know, uh, you will learn a valuable lesson. Okay, so uh, do we have to change uh, on the document uh, the model we choose, or I mean, that... keep that one and maybe experiment another one? Okay, yeah. fine, thank you. Yeah, so that, that, that one will tell us at least this model has been experimented, like, and we know that for sure. Okay, good. Uh, ready? Hello, everyone. Um, I was about to ask about the uh, uh, data labeling. So, in order to have uh, a model that can, you know, th that can do something more than understanding the Amharic language, so we can we should use the labeled or the tagged data, right? So, and doing all the labeling manually is kind of impossible or tiresome. And uh, so we can use another methods like using uh, GPT-4 models, if it is appropriate. I don't know, but uh, we can just train or find I mean, the data. I, with let, let me say, let me say, it. in every case, then nothing beats manual uh, mm -hmm. when you want to get a very quality data, because at least, you know, that one you are sure. But for testing and sometimes uh, doing, it's also, of course, but it's going to be very bloody expensive also to do so much of the labeling using GPT-4. But I would advise exactly, yeah, it's a mix of them. So don't really, it's ultimately everybody thinks like, okay, I'm going to be smarter by doing this. But the manual label is inevitable. So at least plan in a group. I think we might provide as well, Nati probably is preparing a tool that will help the labeling. Um, plan at least. 1,000 just to label by hand in a group. Um, and then 
The rest we can try, of course, anyone who finds a good method with GPT-4, we can also do it uh, that way, some of them. But I would say it's not just, don't try to just only do with GPT-4 or other techniques, just do the manual as well. Aim for 1000 at least from, from manual ones. Because that way you will also find it, you know, a comparison whether actually um, GPT-4 is making sense or not. Hmm. So like what you advise is uh, some of us, I mean, if we, if, we, if, we, if we have planned to start the fine tuning by now, so you 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 give us advice to start uh, fine tuning by already labeled data by doing them manually at uh, like for the time being. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think it's definitely it, it might feel a bit overwhelming, but it's not, and we do it all the time. You know, it's boring, but just get it done, and it's not going to take that much. You know, it might take two hours. You know, to go through like da da da, -da and then label them. Um, some of them, and if you know, one person can label 100 to 100 easily in one hour, or maybe just in one and a half hour. Of course, if the team doesn't have that many people who speak Amharic, that's a problem. Um, so I would say just, but for teams that have that, do it more. Like, let's say one person should do that, spend one, two hours, and it's going to be very valuable. Mm -hmm. So I understand what you're saying. I really got the point, but we were at some point, we were thinking to just use the label data for the fine tuning and to use the label data for the rag thing you know so. Yeah, but, so again there are two things again here there might be some confusion so there are two types of fine tunes that you need to do probably to get a, a good result and that's an experiment right the one part is just the unsupervised fine tuning the unsupervised fine tuning means every data you have of still keep of course some data for test you know otherwise uh, we need we need to get another data for test so if you use everything then we should give you another data for test um but that one the unsupervised fine tuning is to help the model understand language like amharic better it's um tokenizer it's generation capacity and all that and then there is another instruction fine tuning that's much more to see to make it suitable for a particular in this case um our generation that part is supervised and for any supervised learning you need a label then there is another component it's called rug element the rug element is much more now the model is capable of generating amharic ads because it's good now you have trained it but you want to customize the ad what it is generating you do rug to give it context on you know how it should generate that ad. The rag is just building on top of that. Does that make sense? The three components? Yeah, yeah. They make sense. So yeah. So it's exactly so you might you will need a different label data for the rag because in the rag, you know, it's much more you have a label data, but on top of labeling of whether this is an ad you want to generate or you know, compute similarity, you also need some information about, you know, the campaign, the product, and the, you know, the brand, all that information will should be given together. And then it will generate and then you might say, okay, how much of the generated and what is the ground truth, you know, how close are they? And that's what that's the rug part is the rug labeling is for that, you know, that one. Um, but for the instruction fine tuning is slightly different. It's basically you only need to tell it, you know, sm smartly, okay, which one is, for example, an ad and all that and generate, uh, continue the, you know, here is an ad, a start of an ad, continue the next one, uh, complete with the next word. And then you give it just, you know, the whatever you have already within an ad, then you give it as a, as a label. So things like that, you're, you're giving it instruction and then you ask it to generate. So that one is a supervised fine tuning, and that part is usually called instruction fine tuning. And then the unsupervised fine tuning, that one is basically for the capacity of the base model. Okay. 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 Good. Thank you. I think these are important questions, and if there are people are not, if they if there's still confusion, let's. I think this is a good question. I like it. Okay. Um. I think was that then Rudolph, and then.
or was that you no know, Rudolf? Do you don't have question? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. go on. Uh, good morning, Abeba. How are you? So, uh, my question is regarding uh, the login to the Jupiter Hub. So, uh, if you allow me, I'll share my screen. I, yeah, okay. I didn't hear what, what is that question. Sorry. Okay, uh, I'm not able to log in to the Jupiter Hub. Uh, but did you SSH? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I did. and maybe you can share it just, yeah, so it's uh, easier for everyone as well. <clears throat> can you see my screen? Yeah, we do. Okay. So, but first, just can you show me the, the SSH? Yes, of course, okay. I will show you. Uh, this one. Okay. Did you see? Hello? Yes, I can. Yeah, yes, okay. I can. So normally you don't need even uh, the Jupiter just in that sense. You can also SSH now, like you cannot, if you are, if you are using base code, <clears throat> are you using base code? Yes, so uh, you, you try to use one. Yeah, yes. just so the, you did you were you able to log in from here so you can go to the remote? No, yeah, so no, no, yes. no, yeah, you, you logged in from here, right? Yes, so yeah, the, you can open any no notebook from here. No? You don't need the that one is just Jupyter notebook, okay? So, so you uh, can work from here. Because you you seem to have logged in as well, um, so it's not from the terminal. But did you just connect? So if you go to, uh, it's called the remote on the left, on the left side. Some some of the icon and the icon, which is the square icons, is you know not the window icon. Is the so if you just go to the window, like to the left menus, and then down down. The, the last one, the last one. The last one? The last one, yeah. So that's a remote explorer, yeah. And then you would get your G4 there. It should be, if you put it in dot .ss, .ssh uh, config, it should come. So can you, uh, yeah, so then it's connected to G4. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you can work from here. You don't need to do if you can now open open file then you can basically open or open folder you can basically work from here you don't need actually the notebook from the the browser um, from the browser okay yeah there's no need i mean only i did that one for those people who want to connect from the browser just like uh, cola but in this case you can actually connect with your base code and it should be fine okay good thank you and, and, the, and the only reason that this might be if you just type i mean if it's g4 maybe type the one i'm gonna send the text so if you just do that Yeah, so there, if you type it and paste it, yeah. So your your password is the same, Rudolph, whatever is the username. So for everyone, it's the same. The username and password are the same. Why? Why? Just copy it and paste it. Rudolph, whatever is the username is written is your password. Uh, uh, the password and the username are the same? They are identical. So if you don't, yeah, just choose that. Oh, okay. Copy it and paste, paste the username as a password. Yeah, now enter. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's working. So it should be even now if you go to the browser. So go to the browser. OK, so type exactly. It's there. So no, no, no. You don't need to do anything. Just now type paste and also paste there. Perfect. So if it, if it is an issue, it's because of some home thing. I will, we will correct this. But if, if you have an issue there that doesn't log in because of maybe it just didn't find the, you know, the, the home directory. So it's something that we can fix easily. Okay. Um, but in principle, that's it. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that part is maybe just a very small home directory not found. But I will we will fix okay. that. I, I, but you can you can work with your base code in any way. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. Uh, another question is from uh, a teammate. Uh, he tried to to SSH, and he didn't have access. Uh, the the outcome uh, was the, a permission <clears throat> denied. Yeah, because if the person does sent only their key after i sent we haven't updated so whoever filled the form last night and until this morning have an access and the others should wait um because i have to update now i have to create user or home directory for everyone that's new or that filled the form this morning um, okay so it should be that if you have an access i think in your team probably you are the only one as far as i know you are group four right yes so and let me just check in group four. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I will check that. Most likely, it's that, that one. OK. And OK, if those people, OK, so maybe Alexander, did you send Wes? OK, let me just uh, actually just so that which group four, let me check again. Nice. <clears throat> So that only Rudolf from Group Four has access currently, because maybe Alexander, you filled the form not um, recently. So if that is the case, we'll, I will update everything, so you will you will have access. <clears throat> okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. My last good. question. I have yeah. a last question. Uh, how how the the leader of a group are choosing? I think you guys choose who is going to be um, really at, like who should be and or first is voluntary and if not basically by you know vote them like everybody assigns to everybody who should be the the leader and the leader should be more coordinating so you know everybody should believe that that person uh, so by volunteer first if not volunteer by voting or the order can be voting and volunteering okay you, cho you choose them i mean it, it's exactly like in it you know it's an experience in itself to be a team lead and you can write it in your cv so people should volunteer in principle okay good okay um yeah. on a single github repo with branching and merging yeah i mean i'm assuming hussein it should be that you know if you are in a team you're working so in principle you can create either some um, organization and then collaborate there or just in one account becomes a collaborator and using exactly branching, you know, creating new branches and merging them, having the main, for example, branch to be the definition as well as the dev and the production to be those separate and then the rest are basically based on features branches. Yeah, does that, hopefully that addresses um, and then we have Alexander. You can you can go. You can ask. Uh, okay, uh, the question already raised by my teammate who is Rodolf. Yeah. Uh, I try to connect. Yeah. Almost two times, but. Yeah, yeah. You, because you didn't fill the form earlier, so when I created the the machines, only those who filled the form had access. So you okay. filled the form recently. So we will give you access, but. I have to recreate again um, your home directory. So that's why you don't have access now. 
Okay. okay. Uh, did you feel the fall? Yeah, yes, I already feel. Okay. So this morning or when did you feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah this morning. Exactly. Yeah, sure, it's fine. Uh, it is fine. It's just that I had to create and I had to create with the people who had already filled the form. So so that means you will have access just in a couple of hours. Okay, thank you. Okay. And if anyone hasn't filled the form, you should do it so that you, you, you can have access. Um, I will probably in one hour, I will create all the people that has not been created already and I will update. Okay, uh, Mubarak or Abraham? Abraham and then Mubarak. Look, Abraham is left. Mubarak. <clears throat> okay, uh, my question is, after uh, using the Nathanael school in cleaning, uh, on the .txt file, there, uh, if the channel have an English message, uh, it still have an English text. So, uh, is it better to remove uh, that English text or uh, it so. doesn't matter? I mean, if it is, if it is not mixed, if it's only English, you should remove it because then it doesn't help. Uh, <coughs> for example, if it is a sports channel, maybe uh, the player's name or uh, no, no. Somehow... if it is a mix it, if it's a mix it, it's useful. Oh, uh, it is a mix it, yeah. If it's a mix it, then keep it. If it has Amharic and English, it's fine. <coughs> okay. If it's only just English, then it doesn't help. But if it's mixed, it actually helps, so it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Abraham. Sorry, I had accidentally closed the tab. No, it's uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so my question was, you were even answering it uh, earlier. I just wanted to know more about the rug uh, on where, on how we uh, give it context. You said instruction specific uh, super uh, yeah. tuning. I wanted to know more about that yeah. and the so difference they, between the two data yeah. sets. Okay, so they, you know, we have a three element, right? If we decompose it, the one element is basically giving the capability um, for the base model to have in Amharic understanding. That's unsupervised um, training. And the second component is to for it to be very focused on generating some, in this case, ads, so that you know you constrain its power towards just one thing, and that's why because you only have a small data so that's that will help right and and that's one so that's a second one and usually you train by that using this instruction training um format so you give it basically you know the usual way is that you give it uh, an instruction that instruction could be uh, you know continue the next ad here is an ad uh, uh, a partially given ad continue it and then, and then you have a context about that ad. Maybe if you don't have any context, that can be just you know the context can be ads in that uh, in that channel. So previous ads in that channel, for example, can be a context. And then you have the uh, basically the type the uh, the answer, which is which because you split it, you know what is left, what's remaining, and then uh, basically the category. The category in this case, if you are just training it only for one, it's fine. The category defines, you know, what if you want to also train for Q and A, you can say categories Q and A or summarization or generation things like that. Okay, so that part is a supervised fine tuning to enable the LLM to generate quality from a small data quality um, part. Normally, you don't need that one because that you know many LLMs. If it was English, you don't need to fine tune because. You can actually generate it um, using in-context learning. It's whatever GPT for. But in our case, it will help definitely that one, that component, that that layer of fine-tuning. Okay, it's clear up to this point, right? Yeah. Ram? Uh, so yes. Can you hear me? So the two components are clear. Yeah. Yeah, the two components are separately clear. So we, how do we? I mean, do you, we use the same uh, content man, the con the same content to train both, or do we specify it more on the second I one? Think, is that what? I think in this case you can use both, but the first one is unsupervised, so you can use any Amharic text. And you can load from any place that has Amharic and just give it. So you can you can use every Amharic that you can find in the internet for for the unsupervised training. 
including the, the data we gave you. And the second part, it, because it's about an ad, any any Amharic ad will help. So including, you know, but the one we give you is one. So if you just want to focus, if you don't, let's say the, the simplest and laziest part of it would be to not refer any data from the internet, you know, about any Amharic data, text, you just use what we gave you and that's fine. You, you, you use it in both parts. But the second part, you have to filter it. In the first part, you don't need to filter. You give everything. It's the second part you have to filter only to the to the ones to the ads in the Telegram channels. By filter, yeah? you mean ad specific, right? Yeah, basically filter out anything that is not ad. So that's why you need a labeling to say whether this is ad or not ad. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so then the third part. The third part, so you only have, like I, I wanted essentially just to break it because these two are together it's about fine-tuning then the rug part it's another type of data so it's about generating a specific type of ad given a context information given for example the brand the product things like that so that one is a different separate just once you have now a model a llm you can consider that one to be now your open ai and you do something very similar to the one that you did last week to try to you know, get the context, you know, whatever about the product and ask it to generate specifically about that product with a certain prompt. So that's the rug part. We didn't give you any brief, so that's where we are working on it as well, just to, to prepare some examples at least for that. Of brief, brief means like specification about which art to generate, you know? Okay okay uh, yeah see, that's what it says like the brief campaign information that's what you're going to provide us exactly an example so, of that yeah exactly so that's for the rug part is exactly to be able to control what is generated so in the fine-tuning sense you are only making it capable to generate something and the first part is amharic the second part is ads amharic ads while the rug part is to control what what type of art should be generated Okay. So, uh, thank you. That, I hope that is clear. Yeah, yeah that clears it out. Yeah. If, if if you you can rephrase this thing and share your understanding now in the Slack channel, I think it will help everyone. And the same, everyone, please just sometimes writing it is really helpful for you and for others. So please uh, do write whatever you understand, so that I can comment as well if if your understanding is not correct. So, um, doing that. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, Magdas, I don't know if you are Basile, okay? Uh, hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, okay, so my question is, uh, I heard, uh, so from the, th the three steps, the first one is unsupervised. So is, for example, uh, the data cleaning very important for the first part or only for the second part where it is by, and by data cleaning got, what, what is by by data cleaning. Data cleaning? so uh, if by it is about cleaning. separating empty ones english ones i think it helps giving it uh, even if it's unsupervised giving it a quality that means some you know everything amharic and balanced amharic things like that will help it even if it's unsupervised <clears throat> okay but it's and much more there the cleaning when we talk about cleaning there is much more really making it you know giving it a sensible amharic for example not a you know not a very wrong amharic <clears throat> amharic that actually is much more broader like suitable you know for the language it's like instead of like repeating amharic 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 if you give it you know a million times that doesn't that doesn't help it so amharic that shows diversity will help it there so cleaning in that sense there is about that yeah uh, okay and second of all is there anything set up for i mean i saw your post on slack but i don't know if we have made any progress on the labeling part which you're supposed to do manually but i don't think we've made any right now just do it even if just it's like in google uh, like you you know you have a data frame and export it to google sheet and do it by hand uh, some of them but yeah it's um Hopefully, we will provide something. I think uh, that will help. 
Yeah, I meant like, uh, so from your yesterday talk, I understood that it was going to be coordinated. So if we do something, you know, the other group doesn't have to redo it or something like that. Or yes. should we just do individual ones? Uh, so you mean you, you're like the channel division? Yeah. So the, yeah okay. So I, I think, yeah, I have the channels. I didn't break them down to divide. But yeah, let, let, let me just do that after this, uh, if that helps. Yeah. So, so that we, I will just divide by message ID as well. Like for, because Tikva is a very quality data, I think everyone should label from Tikva and then some from others. So what I would probably do is that Tikva from message one to uh, message you know uh, five thousand or ten thousand, whatever you can there, is group one. Ten thousand to uh, twenty thousand is group two, like that. I will divide it like that Tikva, and then so within that uh, you know whatever ad you get, you label them. Just basically you say this is ad. -ad. If you put any label to it, it means it's an ad. Um, and then uh, the other channels, I will divide just, just the channel names per group. So I will just post that also in Slack so that it's coordinated. All right, perfect. But we all knew you will use that for the second part. So now we should focus. Yes, so exactly. the first part is mainly we just be cleaning the yeah. data generally yeah, exactly. and putting everything in. Yes, all yes, right. correct. Thanks. Yeah, OK. OK. Magdas, uh, I think if you still haven't, uh let's just i think it's sh you should have because you are in which group are you and i, I remember i think you have saint um I'm not sure which group is oh uh magadas is in group two she's in our yeah. group so i think she's the only one actually who has access because of like yes. that, the, so she should in principle i don't I, I think this 38 to 97 i don't know where it comes from uh, unless she allows it, that's the, it seems the, um, the port is wrong, but in principle, I think as you have seen with, you can just connect with uh, base code, that should be easy as well. And from there, once you SSH, you can basically hit clone your repository and work with that, and that will be coordinated. And everybody's roots, that means you have root access, so if you do some sudo, then or you know it will ask you for your password and your password is your username so it should be fine okay 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 yeah coordinate within your group how to use efficiently uh, your machine and uh, we will see if we can also connect the different groups such that ultimately when you are tr running a production in parallel you might be able to use but that that one i will not promise that we will be able to do it or not but that that could increase your gpu access from one to six that will help. Okay. But I think hopefully that everybody's question is answered and everybody is happy to at least start. I know we, some, some things are slightly late, whatever, but hopefully you have got everything. Okay, great. Then I'm done um, from my side. Thanks, everyone. As Karin, we can stop or if you can continue. I think I overran the time. But... Uh, uh, yeah, just one uh, small remark. So the tutorial that was uh, is going to be like in uh, 40, 40, uh, 40 minutes. So like uh, um, it's just delayed by one hour. Okay, so we, they will start at UTC. Um, 10, 10 a.m. Okay, yeah. So maybe it's also written in the Slack. So that's. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Bye.